Hello, welcome to part three of physics paper one from AQA prior to 2018. So we can, we did, this is the question we looked at last time about the pressure in the diver's air tank. So we're going on to the next one. What happens to the volume of the air when it is released from the canister? So this is talking about the volume of the air, not the canister. Okay, so as it's reducing pressure, the volume of the air increases. Just put my pencil. So the volume of the air increases. The volume of air increases. So I think people could get confused with that one. I think if it was asking about the canister, it's actually asking about the actual air itself. Okay, so now we look at the next question. Let's open it up. Ah, okay, so a completely different question, not about pressure at all. Number four, the Chernobyl disaster was a nuclear accident that happened in 1986. So that's actually before I was even born. Radioactive isotopes were released into the environment. The radioactive isotopes emitted alpha, beta, and gamma radiation. What is an alpha particle? Okay, so an alpha particle is um, a helium nucleus, so it hasn't got the electrons. So what it is, okay, is two protons and two neutrons. Okay, so it's kind of it's a bit nasty, isn't it? That it's asked in a weird way. So I would say, yeah, two protons and two neutrons. So obviously it's going to be two and two. So, uh, so it's two charged particles and two neutral particles. I mean, that's quite nasty to, <laughs> to ask it like that. I don't know if I've ever asked uh, my students it like that. Okay, but that's the way the exam is. At least we're prepared to answer it. Okay, that's the point of me doing this. It's prepared to answer it. Let's just um, scroll down. Which statement about beta radiation is true? Tick one box. It is the fastest moving type of radiation. Gamma's faster. It is a type of radiation with a negative charge. That's true. It's a type of radiation with the greatest mass. No, that would go to alpha. It's a type of radiation with the longest range or the greatest range in air. No, that's gamma. So it's a type of radiation with negative charge. It's the only one that's actually right. Okay, big space. Let's open up the, um, the next page. Just, again, this is an AQA in another video in the series. There's a lot of space, There's empty space. <laughs> In the AQA, um, the paper. So don't always panic and thinking you're going to have to work loads of things out. That just seems to be the way that they um, space the exams out. A bit more space than other ones. But yeah, that's, I can see students getting a bit worried about that. It does look like um, there's going to be more things to do. Let me zoom out a little bit, actually. Um, okay. So again, they've got huge, huge space again. Where's the paper? <laughs> but yeah, don't panic. It doesn't always mean you have to write loads. Okay, it's just, yeah, it's just the way the exam is. So let's go on with the question. Which statement about gamma, so it's not gamma, which statement about gamma radiation is true? Tick one box. Okay, it's a low frequency electromagnetic wave. No, it causes the charge of the nucleus to change. The gamma hasn't got a charge, so it couldn't do that. It causes the mass of the nucleus to change. No, because it hasn't got a mass, it can't do that. It has a very long range in air. Okay, that is true. Okay, so one of them is there to, me to, to sort of trip you up. It's that one because gamma is a high frequency electromagnetic, electromagnetic wave, it's not a low frequency. Low frequency is like radio. Okay, so I'm going to open the next page up. Yeah, they like to um, put everything on different pages um, in AQO. I'm just open it up. Okay, so table three shows the half, I'm going to zoom out again. Table three shows the half lives of two of the radioactive isotopes that contaminated the environment. So this is from Chernobyl, okay? So cesium-137, half-life 30 years, iodine-131, eight days. So they've got very different half-lives. A soil sample was taken from the area around Chernobyl in 1986. The soil sample was contaminated with equal amounts 
of cesium-137 and iodine-131. Remember, it was taken around um, when it occurred. It told you. You didn't have to remember. It told you earlier. So they just read it back if you've forgotten. Explain how the risk-linked each isotope has changed between 1986 and 2018. Both isotopes emit the same type of radiation. So obviously, based on their half lives, they're so different. Let me just put my pen thicker so you can see it. Okay, so iodine has got a really short half life. So the risk, um, the risk associated with iodine has gone down. Okay, risk associated with iodine. 131 has decreased because um, many half lives have passed. Half lives have passed. decreasing its activity. Okay, cesium um, one three sevens activity would have decreased a little as uh, one half-life has passed. Even at the time of writing now, only one half-life half has still passed. Okay, so you could have said longer, but I, I put the number. Okay, because obviously you can work out how many half lives, so many, many half lives. Um, you, haven't worked, you don't have to work out the exact number of half lives for iodine, but many, many more for cesium. Okay. Determine the year when the activity of cesium, um, okay, determine the year when the activity of the cesium 137 in the soil sample will be 130. 132, one over 32 of its original value. Okay, um, so it's going to be a long time, as you can tell. So we're going to start from 1986. Okay. So 1986, right, it started. So we're going to have five half lives. It's, so five half lives. It's kind of easy to what thing it's going to be. So it's maths, this is. Five half lives is five times 30. Okay, five times 30 is 150. Add that to 1986 plus 150 is quite simple maths really. Okay, 2136, 2136. 2136, I think you're thinking how you'd say that, 2136. Okay, well, I don't think I'll still be alive then. But it's just, it's just trying to show you there, isn't it? But have you got a long half-life? It can stay dangerous for quite a long time. You've got a long half-life. So if you see um, questions with lots of half-lives, if they've got longer half-lives, usually the element's more dangerous because it stays around longer. Okay? Let's have a look at the next question. Let's open it. Okay, completely different question, not about Chernobyl anymore. Figure seven shows cavity wall insulation being installed into the wall of a house. Brick block insulation, the pipe in the end, sort of like a foam. Okay. Explain how the wall would explain how the wall reduces unwanted energy transfers. Okay, so this is um Quite interesting. Okay, so let's put my pencil on to write something. 
Okay, so not most, most homes in the UK have this. Okay, so it says the wall has, it's got a number of layers, isn't it? The wall now has three layers. The wall's that whole thing. The wall has three layers. Okay. So the um, insulation and the brick and brick uh, and blocks. We know as breeze blocks. Okay, those things, breeze blocks have low thermal conductivity. Okay, so less energy is transferred by conduction. Transferred. By conduction. Okay. Question five continues on the next page. Yeah, I do like to just space me out, don't I, a bit. Okay. okay, the cavity insulation was tested. Let me zoom out a little bit. The heat inside the house was switched off. The temperature inside the house was measured every 20 minutes for two hours. So we've got time in minutes, temperature in Celsius. Let's so start at 25, it's quite hot, isn't it? Quite warm. Uh, went down all the way to 8.4. So it must have been quite a cold winter day. I guess that's a good time to test it, isn't it? So it's you want it to be good in the winter, don't you? Summer's even hot anyway. Determine the temperature inside the house after 30 minutes. Okay, so 20, 30. Right, so what we're going to do this, it kind of it seems more difficult than it really is, isn't it? Because it's going to be between these two. I'm just going to get my pen on again. A lot of this is actually maths, really, isn't it? This paper, to be fair. Okay, so you could get this in um, a maths paper, perfectly acceptable, because you don't really, this question, you don't really need to know any science, do you? And to answer this bit, it's just about maths, isn't it? Okay, so it's between these two. Okay, so um, you've got, I would put the, the, uh, the average, okay, this is to determine the temperature in the house after. 30 minutes. So we've got 20.8 minus 17.4 divided by 2. That gives us, that brings live for you all. Okay. So I'm um, calculating as we go as well as so we have a live calculation. So we've got 20.8. Minus 17.4 divided by 2. Okay, so it's a 1.7 degree um, decrease between those two. Okay, an average. So what we're going to do is I'd put um, 17. It's cooling down, yeah, that's another thing, isn't it? It's cooling down or heating up. That's the 17.4 plus 1.7. That was a colder one, so you, you could do it the other way around, isn't it? Okay, it's equal to um, 19.1 Celsius. It's a little bit tricky one. Um, so it involves an average. So yeah, it's a lot more mathsy than we kind of think there, isn't it? So um, I can't think of any other way of doing that. I'd like to tell you, you get marked for, you get marked for that. Um, so if you did 20, let's see what's the way around, 20.8 minus uh, 1.7, you get the same answer. Okay, so if you did, I'm just making sure there, so 20 and then minus it, so it's, it's the value that's going to be in between there, isn't it? Okay, so what I'm going to do 
um, I'm going to stop the video here and I'm going to go to part four. So thank you for listening and I'll see you in part four. Thanks, bye.